Hi, today we'll be working on this Famicom. Uh, these were um, obviously came from the factory with RF output and didn't have any composite or any other modern uh, video output. So what we'll do, we'll do the AV mode. So we'll modify this device so that it can output composite video instead of RF. Uh, now, this has obviously been taken apart, uh, and for the reasons that I'll um, mention towards the end of the video, uh, quite interesting to be honest. Um, but anyway, um, the topic, main topic, is to do the AV mode. So, before we do that, let me just quickly show you how to disassemble. This is fairly um, easy. So, you just remove six screws. By the way, all these screws are exactly the same, so you need, don't need to worry about uh, mixing them. So, once you remove these six these screws, this will um, come off, put it aside, and then there's uh, another set of screws, so there's four screws um, that hold this main board, and there's also four screws that um, hold this uh, power supply slash video output. So, once you remove those, this will come off again. And one thing that I do recommend is that you also remove the two screws right here where the uh, power switch is. So remove the two screws and then this is completely free um, so that you can work on it. Um, so I'll put this aside. So as I said, uh, I've worked on this because it didn't work, it didn't power up at all, and again I'll cover that towards the end of the video. But uh, for now, let me um, show you one thing. So, the um, let me share the screen, I'm not sure if you can see this, but uh, we'll be on the left hand side here on this on this picture, you see the diagram of the mode. So we'll be doing, so what people do, they are usually, they usually use the PNP transistor that's already on the board, and I'll show you where it is, and they just then add 100 and 150 ohm resistors. Um, they, they essentially work as a, as a um, voltage divider, and then uh, a capacitor, and then they, that, that gives you composite video. Now, people quite often, let me go back here, people, what people often do, so this is the transistor, let me zoom in. Okay, so that should be better. So this is the transistor that uh, we were talking about, the responsible for the video. So what people usually do, they desolder this transistor and they kind of build that small circuit on top of of the board, so on this side. Now, I this is not um, really elegant. Um, for okay, let's let's uh, go back a little bit. So there's a few revisions of the of the Famicoms of these boards. So they, there's HVC CPU 01 to 08 or 09, as far as I remember, and there's HVC CPU GPM something, three letters, 01 and 02, um, and those two later revisions with the HVC CPU something, other than a number. Uh, they actually benefit from kind of moving the, the, all these things to this side of the board. I have several of these Famicoms, six or seven. If I find um, that newer revision, I'll do separate video, but for now we are focusing on this earlier revision, so HVC CPU 01 to 08 or 09, can't remember. So, for these boards, there's really no point on, on, of to move all this to this board, disorder this and move to this board, and I'll show you why. So, going back to this screen again, so on the right hand side, on the left hand side again you see the what we are planning to do, on the right hand side you, you see the existing video output, and again this goes to the RF output, so we need to modify, we need to adjust the signal level to the appropriate values, or acceptable by modern TVs or, or comp to match the composite video standard, essentially. So, as you can see, it is pretty much identical with the two uh, resistors, obviously the, the transistor, two resistors, and then it goes to video, but we'll need to add um, the um, capacitor, but we'll worry about that later. But focusing on these two resistors, and let me show you where those two resistors are, so R12 and R16, and I think that, by the way, that's, that's a mistake, because 
uh, let's go back here so I try to move it here so you see this resistor this is R12 as per the diagram and this says R6 and that's what I was saying I, I think uh, this should be R6 here on the diagram 2.2k and the reason I think that, that is that if, if you look at the at the board and follow the traces you will see that this is exact exactly that that um, that diagram part of that diagram so if that's the case here then we can just replace R12 with 100 ohm resistor and replace that R6 slash R16 with a 150 ohm resistor and that's it we don't need to build anything we don't need to desolder the transistor we'll just replace this one with a 100 ohm and this one with 150 ohm and then this circuit goes to this connector here and this is the the first pin here right here is the video it goes right here to this pin sorry to this pin and then follows the goes through the circuitry of the RF modulator so what we need to do then we need to um, break that circuit at some point and I'll show you how uh, and put that um, capacitor 33 microfarad capacitor somewhere here and then we'll have direct composite output right here so again I'll go through that uh, throughout the video but first things first let's desolder these resistors and replace those with 100 and 150 ohm resistors so let me do it right now there, there's a few options uh, you could actually desolder those fairly easily uh, with just um, uh, the soldering iron just heat up one side pull one side heat up the other side put the other side then clean the thing with uh, with a wick clean the holes with a, some sort of wick uh, but I I will use um, I will use my desoldering gun because there will be some desoldering here on on this board as well so um, let's do it right now and um, just as usual what I'll be doing um, I'll be adding some fresh solder to the points that I'm desoldering so let's have a quick look again so this is one unfortunately these legs are bent so it won't be easy the soldering is will be tricky so this is one of the resistors and this one here is the other one so let me add some fresh solder So this one, I think. Just like that. And then, yeah, this one right beside the small electrolytic cap. Right there. So that's done. Uh, let me turn on my uh, my uh, desoldering gun okay so my desoldering gun is ready so again these are bent so um, how I usually do that I just heat it up for a second or two then just go under and try straighten that leg and then pull the solder don't think it worked but we'll see so the other one I'll heat it up go underneath yeah this is I think it worked let me just have a quick look actually let's do the other one so the other one was right here here 
that should do it. Uh, I'll clean this. Okay, let's see. So this one's not coming off. One side is okay on this one, so this side is okay. How about this one? This one actually came off fairly easily. Let's just try and remove it. And those bent legs are um, pain in the lower back, but... So this one's gone. With this one we'll need to work on it a little bit more. Actually it's free, it's just the bent leg that is holding it up. So, just like that. Both gone. So, again, both uh, resistors have been removed. So, uh, let's just go back to going back to the diagram. So, we'll need to rep replace R12 with 100 ohm and R6 with 150 ohm. So, I have a um, 100 ohm resistor right here. So, just bend it and R12 right here. Just slide it in there. And I have 150 ohm resistor here. And this one goes in this spot right here. Okay, I'll flip it over, just bend the legs slightly so that these resistors don't fall off. Yeah, they should be okay. And let's go ahead and solder those. So, start here. And the other one. of those excess wires. That's done. So, uh, as you can see, both installed in place. Now, that's one part of the diagram have a look the diagram so what we need now is 33 microfarad capacitor and uh, for that I'm using um, what I'm using for that I'll be using 33 microfarad uh, tantal capacitor I kind of like this I think you could use electrolytic cap uh, oh, sorry, I, I think you could use the um, ceramic cap for that, but again, I think these are these work very well, um, so I'll use this. Now, where do we play, place it? So, um, as I said, this board, obviously this video output go, is right here, and right here on this pin, so, and that, that track goes, I hopefully you can see this, goes right there, so there's one component and then that component is um what is it it's a capacitor i believe so there's a capacitor here see the cap i think it is capacitor and then there's another uh, uh, another um component 
here that goes from here to here and I think this is a resistor, small resistor. So what I'm going to do, I will go ahead and remove both of these components just to isolate this this um, trace and this trace from the rest of the of the circuit and I'll install that capacitor right here in this place and then I'll take the video out from this hole or from this point here and just wire it to to this um, connector but we will also need to isolate this connector and this connector has uh, so uh, this is ground so that's okay we need to remove whatever is here so this is the probably the um, the pin and there's something here on this side so we'll need to remove that and also wherever wherever it goes so could be this could be this I'll, I'll see so let's do that right now so again I'll use my desoldering gun to remove one two three four four um, or the solder four pins and those components will fall out hopefully if not we'll pull them out and again I'll probably add some fresh solder first And as you can see, I've been working on this, and again, towards the end of the video, uh, I didn't clean it because uh, I'll have more cleaning once once I do this mod. Right there. And while I'm at it, I'll also add some fresh solder here, so it's easier to remove. And then let me see what's in there. So it's cap one cap at least one cup there's probably another cap yeah I'll do it later once I see what's there okay so that's done let's go ahead and remove these components here and again these are bent Okay, I think we are done with this. Okay, let's see what falls off. So yeah, right here, yes, this is moving definitely. Let's try and straighten those. Okay, so I can you probably can't see this, but this cap is definitely moving. Let me just grab pliers if I can find them. So one cap was right here and the other component fell off already. Where is it? There. Right here. So a um, small resistor. So with that done we now have a um, clear video path. So right here we can install the, our capacitor right here and then we can take video out from this hole here run a wire from that hole to the somewhere here to one of these points probably here okay so let's see what components we need to take out from this side so again I'll use my soldering gun I'll start here Okay, now let's push that, I'll push that and I'll see which component, oh I can see there is a, I think it's a cap, yeah you won't be able to see it, there's a greenish kind of cap, uh, sorry, um, I think it's a resistor, and there's another component here, 
I can see the band leg here, so we'll remove that. So that resistor goes to the left, and I think it might be this one. Okay, let me. Hmm. Just wondering, I think it might be this one. This pin here. No harm. Let's try and remove it. And we'll see if I'm right. Yep. That was it. So that is the resistor. Oh, I think it's a resistor. There. This one. But there's something else, and I think it's a small cap capacitor right here. So let's go ahead and see what that is. Again, with that bent pin, it won't be easy, but. Hopefully, and I'm pretty sure it's this one here. I hope it's this one, so I'll clean this off again. Okay, let's see if I was wrong or right. So, is this moving? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's. This tiny cup. Let me try and pull it out. There. So I destroyed it by the way. That's okay. So what we have now, we have. Um, so this is the center pin. So this is where video needs to go. So what we need to do again: install a cap here. Take the signal from this from this point to this point somehow and I'll do it on the inside I believe I'll try okay so let's go ahead and install the cap okay so this is our cap capacitor 33 microfarad again um, just make note that's the plus side or positive longer leg and there's a mark small plus which we probably can't see small plus here so this is the positive side and positive side goes towards the the video right here so so this hole here needs to be positive this is negative so let me try and slide that cap in not sure how I'm going to do this again positive side there so like that. This will be tricky probably. But I'll try to do it anyway. Yeah, I need to bend it, bend the legs first because Okay, it's there. Need to be careful not to let it fall out. Sits there nicely. Okay, let's solder it in. So again, positive side here towards the input signal from the motherboard that's done let's cut off the excess legs right there so let me show you not sure if you will be able to see there probably should be able to see see that blob there yellowish blob so that's the that's the cap that I just installed I'll just straighten it up a little bit just like that 
So now the last thing that we need to do again having a quick look at the diagram we need to we have that cap now and we just need to um, complete the circuit and just install the wire um, and that wire will go from again from this hole here we solder it here and then to one of these So I'll use this piece of wire, hopefully it's not too short, I kind of measure it roughly. So I'll try, what I'll try to do, I'll try to come from the inside, I'll try to... Uh, I'll try to slide it into one of these holes, and then right here from the other side, so that it's kind of um, safe inside there. So let's try... Let's try and slide it in to one of these holes there. Right there, I think it's in. It is. It's right here. Okay, so I'll hold it and I'll try to solder it in. Just like that. So I'll add some. Sorry, you probably can't see this, but again, you'll see the result. It's not easy to do. Um, um, with my with the camera. Right there. So this side is done. Not sure if you can see it, but it's right here. And then the other side, so we need to go in here. Um, where is that cable gone? There. It's right here, and we need to go... I can see the spot already. We need to go in here. And I need to be able to hold it somehow, so that it doesn't fall off. Okay, I think I got it. It's right here. So I've got it here. Bend it a little bit. Hopefully you can see it right there. So, same thing. Right there, that's done. Sorry about that. So, as you can see, the wire is right there, inside. And that's pretty much it. Um, we have um, full circuit. So we've done just that. Uh, and as you can see, it's clean. There's nothing really, you couldn't really, apart from this wire, you couldn't really tell anything was done here. Uh, so, now, um, Obviously, trail bars. Um, we'll work on trail bars later when we do the audio. Now, the audio is fairly simple. Uh, all we need to do is either use... There's audio signal on this pin here, third pin, so the video, then I think it's ground, and then it's audio, and obviously it goes to the pin here. We could, in theory, do the same thing. That would be the cleanest way of doing it, because all we need to do is install... Um, 220-ish microfarad electrolytic capacitor uh, and then take the, the, the audio either from here or from pin 50, 46 this pin, this is directly connected here so this is cartridge port pin 46 so either take signal from here or from pin number 3 here um, we could, that would be the cleanest, do the same thing, so just, um, so pin 3, just remove this one, this one, let me remove the components that are soldered here, and that's probably some sort of cap right here, 
yeah it is a cap so this would be easy uh, and then this one this is a resistor is it yeah so this cap here and this resistor here and then we would install um, that 22 microfarad capacitor here in this place so where that resistor is and then take signal and we would have to remove both of these unfortunately these are you know what I think I'll do that these are um, these components here are on the very edge right there inside and it will be very very hard to reach there and uh, and remove those so um, what I'll do another option so aside from this another option is just go here so there uh, let's assume this uh, I think I have one here no, I need to find it. So let's assume this is the cap that we'll be installing. So solder one um, leg of the cap to this four, to pin 46 and then run a wire from the other leg to the um, jack that we'll be installing or to the, the connector that we'll be installing. And I'll tell you why, why in a, how in a minute. Um, so either this, and I think I maybe do this, or again do it cleaner, install the cap here but I would have to, um, and it's gone. I would need to break that somewhere here and solder the wire here. Let's do that so that it's clean. So, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove these components, as I said. So, this cap here and this resistor here. So, let's do it right now. And we do it. Let's not help. That's good. And this up, and this here. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find 220 microfarad capacitor, install it right here. So, from this hole to this, and I need to break that circuit just to cut that trace, and then I'll connect wire from here to somewhere where I'll install, right here, where I'll be installing the connector. So, let me find that capacitor and let's do it. Okay, so I've got a 220 microfarad 10 volt cap. 10 volts should be enough. Yeah. And how we install, we need to install, oh, sorry, maybe if you don't want to do this and you want to install the cap right here from pin 46, then the positive side goes to the board, towards the board, so towards the source of audio, uh, and the negative side goes to the um, to the connector. So we need to install it in a way that the positive leg is here, negative leg is right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to slide this in right here, I believe. Is it right? No, it's not. So, right here. This must be the place then. Yep. So, goes right there. Let me just bend those legs first. So, um, maybe something like this. Because the spacing, pin spacing, is not right. So, something like this and it'll go there perfect sits there nicely so i'll solder it in there and there cut off the 
Thanks there. Now, last thing, or not the last thing, but one more thing that we need to do, we need to cut this trace. Where is it? This one. Hopefully you can see this, but... Uh, so we soldered the, the um, cap in here, but again, there's some components on this trace, so I will cut it, I will cut the trace, and uh, you can do it however you want, I'll try and use this one this uh, mini Dremel, or whatever you want to call it. Not sure. Okay, so I had to pause the video because my tool um, wasn't charged at all, but in the meantime I actually had a quick look at the whole circuit and, uh, by the way, I cleaned the board just a little bit, and it appears that it's actually very easy, or fairly easy, to remove these components. These were the cap here and the small resistor. They were actually um, kind of not that far, so I could reach them and they fell off essentially. So I won't be cutting this trace, uh, but again, if you don't have a desoldering gun, um, it'll probably be easier for you to just cut the trace and just solder the, um, the wire. Sorry, why it's not focusing? And solder the wire to. Uh, to um, to this point. So again, we've soldered the capacitor 212, uh, sorry, 220 um, microfarad cap here, and we'll take any of these holes, so we'll solder a wire for, from any of these holes to, and that's what we'll do next, we'll need to install um, RCA connector here. So I have one of these, it's the kind of panel mount connector, and uh, I'll show you how to do that, or how I do that. Um, it's kind of tricky because you will need to trim trim this a little bit. I just used a um, um, file, small file. It's actually fairly easy. It doesn't need to be too big. And I'll show you that. And then you also need to do the same thing with the uh, with the case, but once you do it, it looks really good, and in my opinion, it's better than that. Ti quite often, people install in place of this guy, so they desolder this. Actually, we need to cut it off uh, because it's soldered here, and then desolder it from here or the remains and install the, this. Uh, I think it's TRRS, so like mini jack uh, with four uh, connectors, so ground, video. And, uh, and then audio left right but then you will need that dongle um, to um, adapt an, an adapter essentially to split it to to the RCS yeah I don't like that um, but that makes it kind of no cut modification may work for you I prefer this so I will install another um, RCA connector here so uh, before I do that I will obviously need to desolder this switch um, this switch right here, and uh, probably a few components uh, around it, and there's uh, maybe one cab or two caps, I think, inside. So we'll do it right now. Uh, let me power on my my um, the soldering gun, and I'll just remove these components, and then I'll show you how I um, do the how I install the the connector. My right, soldering gun is ready. So let's go ahead and desolder this thing first, or I mean the connector. Sorry, not the connector. The um, the switch. And that should be okay. I'll remove it in a minute. Now let's focus on those components. side. This is gone. And what about this? Okay, we should be good. 
Let's clean it off again. And let's see what we have inside. So, should be able to pull out this. Oh, this is hot. This resistor, yeah. So, one resistor there. Should be able to remove this capacitor, yeah. And the last cap. This one is stubborn. And the reason is that I didn't solder this side. So let's do it now. And it's gone. It just fell off right there. Okay, so let me clean the soldering gun. So the last thing is that um, that switch that I will need to remove. Uh, did I desolder? Oh, I didn't desolder this side. So there's one more pin that holds it in place, which is here. Should be enough. Okay. On either side. And I should be able to remove this one now. Yeah, it comes off. Gone. So, got the switch right there. And now we have um, space. I'm not sure. Yeah, you will be able to see. You see there? So this is the... This is that hole that we'll be using. And there's enough space to put the... The um, the connector, this one. So now, as you can see, this is just not enough. This is just too small, so it won't it won't fit there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and check my put this in there because I will need. Unfortunately, I will need to file a little bit of both sides of the um that's obviously the other way around so just like that I'll just try that so this goes right here and I'm just trying to see the where the center of this thing is now I need to Put this back on, so somehow, actually, let's do it the right way. So let's start here. Like that. This that goes here. Doesn't need to be perfect, I just want this to be kind of sit in place, not with this cable. Just like that. And now that's what I wanted. So I want it to be somewhere here, let me mark this with um, the marker. So I want it to be somewhere here. So from here to here, maybe there, and then just a tiny bit here, and then I'll mark the um, center. So I can take this out. Oh God! Sorry about that. Hopefully it survived. So it's right in the center. So I'll need to file this somewhere here. 
don't make it too big because uh, because where is that connector? That connector will need to um, will need to be able to um, mount this connector here. So it needs some. Uh, I'll show you one trick that I sorry. So we, we need to mount it. So it there's obviously no metal down there. So it will only hold at the top. But I'll show you a um, small little trick that I do uh, to make it a lot sturdier, if that's the word. So, yeah. So, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll file that um, everything and I'll show you the result when I'm done. Okay, so, all done. By the way, I'm using this small file. I bought it on AliExpress or somewhere as a set. It's slightly rounded on both sides, makes the job a lot easier. So, as you can see right here, focus. I didn't, you didn't, don't need to file much, just a little bit. It took me maybe five minutes, including the, the case. And I'll show you why, how to kind of judge if it's okay or not. And then right here, so this is the um, new cutout. It's not perfect, but I'll fine tune it once I install the the, the uh, connector, and then same thing here, I just need cleaning. Again, I will fine-tune it when it's done, and this is what it's going to look like um, there. With the connector it will look a lot better. As I said, I need some cleaning and fine-tuning, but it should be okay. So let's focus on... Let's focus on this connector and how to mount it. So. So you can see this thing has this kind of lip, like um, this thing here. So, and then the, obviously the, it screws in. So what I do, I, first of all, to measure if it fits okay, I just take this, just, I leave this kind of lip, long thingy, on the outside. And I push it in that hole that I did. As you can see, it fits perfectly. So, but again, there's not much space, and, and definitely this screw wouldn't be enough to hold it in place. It's just this tiny uh, bit, it's not even half a circle. So, what I do, I first of all, you'll need to cut this lip a little bit because, again, I'll just show you what I do. So, I'll put it in there. I'll push it in place, make sure it sits flat and in this kind of newly filed hole. You need to cut this. Where is it? I push it down here, just like that. I cut this right here where the, where this uh, opening is, this hole, so that it doesn't interfere with the rest. I cut it off and then I hold it in place and just tap solder it here so that it holds the thing in place, right? And once it's in place, actually, remove this first because it'll be then easier for you to work on it. So, again, put it there. Make sure the this thing is on the outside. Just tap it with the solder. And when it's in place, when it's held by the solder, remove that and solder it all around. Just add a little bit of solder all around, and that way, this will sit there flush, and uh, you can then put this and screw it from the back. It will be a nightmare, just remind you, it will be a nightmare, you will have to, uh, it's not easy, because again, it's no access there, but it's doable. So I'll do it, everything off camera, and I'll show you um, the result, because I won't be able to do it when, my, when the camera is uh, interfering. So again, put it there, it actually should fit like that, so, you see, there's the, like that, and then just make sure it fits there and sits nicely, solder the thing on the edges, just on the edges here, and it will work. So I'll do that and I'll be back. Okay, so it's all done. So you can see here, so 
soldered all around, including this lip or whatever you call it here. Now, as you can see, just uh, an advice, just use the biggest tip that you have and make sure you heat up this shield and, and the, this, this thing. You need to make sure they are both heated and they, because otherwise they won't stick. As you can see, this is now rock solid, it doesn't go anywhere. And then I can put it right in here and it sits there really nicely. Um, now, one thing that you also could do, you could add some sort of uh, metal here as well at the bottom, just if you want to make sure it's 100% um, solid. The other thing you could do, you could actually put this in and then add some solder around this as well. Word of caution, if you heat this up, this plastic will most likely melt. So um, my advice, if you want to do this, if you want to solder this like permanently, um, then plug the cable in and then solder it. This will prevent this plastic from deforming because you won't be able to put the, the plug then or the cable in if you do that. So now the last thing that we need to do is to obviously screw this thing from the back. And again, I will do it, I will do it off camera, preferably use one of these uh, so that it holds, kind of, it doesn't unscrew easily. So I'll do it again off camera and I'll come back and we'll solder that last wire and we'll be done. Okay, so it's done. As you can see, it's kind of rock solid there. There's really no need to solder anything. It just won't go anywhere. Just make sure you screw it. Can you see it at all? Probably not. Make sure you screw it kind of hard and it works. So the last thing now is to connect again. So remember, as you remember, we went, we have a cup here and we want to go from one of these two holes. So on this um, trace, probably this one will be easier because it's closer. So from here to the center of that connector, to that center mounting pin or whatever that is. So again, I have, a, I'll use the same cable. Uh, well, obviously, if you have like shielded cables, those would be the best, but again, there's so little space here. And again, this generates enough, uh, or this generates the um, noise anyway. So I'm not, I don't think it's that um, important. So let me just make sure just trying to see which hole is that is okay so that one there because i need to put it from from the inside obviously so yeah got it right here i don't want this to go anywhere so let me just that, that. Doing with my left hand, which will be a challenge. Perfect. Done. Just cut off the ex excess of that wire. Just like that. And then we can go back inside. And again, you won't be able to see it, probably. So what I'll do, I'll solder it in here to to this center pin of the con of the connector. So I'll add some solder first, make it easier because it will need a lot of solder. Should have done that. Yeah, probably the best would be to add that solder beforehand before that connector is in place because it's not easy now okay I think I got enough and now that wire 
Uh, again, using left hand there. You should be able to stick it there. Done. So, uh, not sure if you can see it, that wire is connected there. So we have everything. So we should have audio and video. Now, we'll go and test it so that you can see um, how good it is or how bad it is. Uh, for, I'm guessing it could be enough, uh, but then uh, we'll do some fixes so that we minimize those um, jail bars. So let me let me connect this thing to my capture device and uh, and I'll show you what we have. Okay, so everything is connected. I have the video, audio, power. I have a dig duck here. Uh, I also connected a controller right there. So everything should work now. Let me let me share the output. And let's power it on. So as you can see, it does work. And uh, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this on YouTube, but there are... I can definitely... I have an external monitor, so I can definitely... I'll turn it off. I can definitely see uh, trail bars. And that's what we will try to get rid of right now. So I'll disconnect it all again and I'll show you what I usually do to get rid of the um, these trail bars. Again, it will probably never be perfect. These were not built for the modern LCD monitors and there's lots of noise on these boards, but uh, yeah, we can try and minimize those. So let me disconnect everything and we'll come. I'll come back. Okay, so everything is disconnected. So, um, to get rid or improve the picture and get rid of the um, trail bars, at least to some extent, uh, I do. I usually do two things. First of all, I add um, 33 or 22 microfarad uh, tantalum cap. So it's the same cap that we used on the right here for the video. You can use 22 microfarad. Um, I have a few of these, so I'll use this one. And you connect it between pin 20 of PPU, which is here. It's on the ground plane, so you can identify it very easily. To pin 22, so 20 negative, 22 positive. So it will go something like that. Obviously, you can you, you need to bend the legs and, and all that. That's the first thing that I do. And the other thing, I add usually 30 three of the same caps or 22 microfarad caps um, on both sides of the board between ground and to filter the, the noise essentially between ground and 5 volts and the easiest way to do it is uh, as far as I remember this is VCC here so as you can see this is 5 volt plane so if we go there this is 5 volts this is ground so I solder one of these right here as well and then, again, this is VCC here, and ground here, and on this side. Again, 22, 32 microfarad will work. Anywhere between ground and 5 volts. And uh, that usually helps a lot. Um, now, people also add, I think CPU, they add... Um, I can't remember the pins now but they filter, do some filtering between 5 volts and ground, but again, this uh, this cap here will take care of it. And so I'll do that off camera because this video will be way too long. I'll do that off camera and uh, I'll show you the result and then we'll see the, um, the final result. Um, so let me do that and I'll come back. Okay, so it's all done. As you can see, I have a cap here and two caps here. And uh, just, uh, again, make sure the polarity is right. So again, the uh, positive side here to pin 22, negative to 20, and then just have a look where the VCC is, which is plus, and where ground is, and uh, and that, sh that should be good. So, um, 
Before we turn it on, I'll um, actually go ahead and uh, put it all back together. Or actually, we'll test it without the case. Um, so, before we... I mentioned that I disassembled that and this, this thing and, and fixed it. So, when I first got it, it wasn't working. It wasn't powering on at all. So, I did my usual tests, which are... Uh, first of all, you go ahead and check, obviously, if this connector is correct. So, check the voltage here. You should, ha you should have 12 volts or 9 to 12, whatever the power supply you use. And then this voltage regulator here. This one. So, as far as I remember, this is input, this is output, and this middle one is ground. So, just test if you have the same voltage, so 9 volts to 12 volts on the input, and then 5 volts on the output. Quite often, with, with Famicom's, um, this 7805 uh, voltage regulator, re regulator can go bad, and you will get zero volts on output. So, um, that's where you replace it. So, go ahead and replace it, and you should be good. But in this one, um, what I noticed is that I had zero volts on output, but the thing was getting extremely hot. So, initially, I thought... Um, and I measured, uh, and I measured, sorry, and, I, and then I measured the uh, resistance here, and it was shorted. So I thought this is bad, so I removed it, but then I measured the resistance here between ground and output again, and it was still shorted. So my first guess was one of the caps. So I actually... This is the one that was in there, the 1000 microfarad capacitor. And I removed it and the short was gone. And let me show you. Hopefully you can hear a beep. So, again, this is a cap. Shorted. And, again, I've seen... I've never seen on Famicoms this cap go bad. I mean short shorted. I've seen this one uh, kind of bulged and uh, but yeah it was never shorted. This one looks brand new essentially but again it's shorted. So worth checking if you connect the power and this thing gets extremely hot and I mean extremely you could you I couldn't I could barely touch this one this this shield here it was extremely hot. So again, just replace um, replace the whole thing and check the caps. It could be this cap, it could be any of the caps, but, but again, um, in my case, first guess was actually right. So yeah, that's the story behind this, this uh, Famicom. Okay, I'll connect everything back and we'll see if this contraption, these three caps, helped. Okay, so it's all connected. Um, again, with these caps at the bottom, and yeah, let's well, let me share my output window and let's power it on. Still works, that's a good sign. Okay, so I'm not sure how it will come up on the YouTube, but to me it looks a lot better. And I mean a lot better on the external big monitor. So I still can see kind of faint, uh, very faint trail bars. Let me just remove that. I can still see faint trail bars, but you really need to look for them. So yeah, as, as I said, um, for this... For these um, revisions, so HVC CPU 01 to 08 or 09, I can't remember. Um, I really think this is the best way you can do it. And as you can see, it's it's clean. I mean, it looks that there's really nothing there, apart from obviously these guys here. But these these are not necessarily AV mode related. These are just to improve the quality of the picture. So, and, and again, this thing here looks kind of factory as well. So, that's how I do it. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, if I find uh, the HVC CPU G, G something, the, the other, the later revisions, I'll do another video on how, how I do this, this thing, this mod. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. Thank you. Please like my videos and subscribe if you like my videos. Uh, and we'll do something else next time. Thank you.